Joseph Wright of Derby, painter of darkness. Yale University Press for the Paul Mellon Center for Studies in British Art. This book, an assessor said, shakes up most of our long-standing ideas about Wright of Derby. This is the book, added one, that succeeding scholars will have to confront when they think about Wright of Derby, who emerges from this radical study as a truly intriguing figure, very different from the way he's always been thought of. The first prize goes to Matthew Kratz, Joseph Wright of Derby, Painter of Darkness. Good evening and welcome to the Society of Antiquaries in London, where I'm uh, delighted to be in conversation with the winner of this year's uh, Berger Prize, uh, Matthew Krask, for his extraordinary book, Joseph Wright of Derby, Painter of Darkness. Thank you very much, Johnny. Uh, it's wonderful to be here and I, we're going to have a short conversation about the book and, uh, and, and your process in writing it. Um, I suppose start off with the title. Um, yeah. It's a bit of a provocation. Well, there's no harm in provocation, Johnny. Uh, the... The bigger issue is what's the place for provocation in art history and that's a provocative statement in itself. Uh, I was trying to write a different sort of book that was kind of irritating. Uh, that was the idea and, if, and that whilst some may look at the arguments as different or original or my placement of an artist, as the, the tone was meant to be different. Um, the tone was meant to be frankly discomforting. <laughs> Yeah. And do, you, do you see what I mean? I, totally I tried to, uh, to um, balance off an elegant feel in the prose against a discomforting feel in the actualities of the book. The book was meant to um, challenge uh, and it was meant to... My understanding in writing it was that um, I, I wanted to displace. Uh, in my view, um, Wright of Derby has been one of those characters who there was an... Uh, too much confidence about where he was placed. And I felt that, it, that whilst I couldn't, uh, and I didn't have the, um, the sheer <laughs> opportunity or energy to completely write a different history of 18th century art, what I did have, I thought of all this all the time in terms of taking a brick out of the wall yeah. and a big brick at the bottom of the wall uh, so that it would invite people to think that if that brick could be taken out, what else can be taken out? So, so, so that brick really is is the kind of received idea of Wright of Derby as sure. painter of enlightenment, painter of uh, sure. de dedicated painter of science, painter of abolitionism, painter of liberal yes. philosophy. Yes, uh, for me, the big issue was a was a art art methodology issue. It was my conviction that zeitgeist theory was alive and well in the social history of art. That that. Um, what was decried in German old art history uh, was acceptable in new art history. In other words, people were continuing to conflate people with periods. And, and Writer Derby, for me, was a classic example of where some, somebody had become a veritable incarnation of his time. Uh, this is problematic. Um, it's problematic for many reasons, but it's primarily problematic because it robs people of humanity. And humanity is textured. And I was trying to get across the idea that humanity is textured, nu nuanced and problematic. People are not the expressions of zeitgeist. Do you get uh, my... Totally. And I think that, that you know, that's uh, demonstrated in the very elegant separation of the, of the book into the two parts. The fantastic yeah. kind of exploration of biography so, in the first Because by and large, Johnny, this was a defence of biography. Yeah. Uh, it's not a biography. It's a defence of biography. Yeah. Um, Although I am, in certain respects, a social historian of art, I'm fully aware of the sneer which comes across the face of certain art historians <laughs> when you start to go into biographical materials, especially Vasarian ones, which yes. I had there. They are regarded as an assemblage of anecdote and therefore that's something to be dismissed. And I regard that as a mainstream problem. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's that aspect of the social history of art which um, seeks to... Uh, it seeks to give artists the, the, um, the place of society and deny artistic individuality. I'm, I'm still old-fashioned enough to believe that um, the um, 
the grandeur of an artist resides in their particularity. So yeah. I picked on an artist who was said to be particular, the special, particular, different, yeah. all those kind of words. And I, by doing that, I was kind of attacking, <laughs> if you get my means, yeah. in an inferred way. Yeah. Do you see and, what I mean? And, and of course, you know, your method is to, to, to root back to absolutely lifetime sources and, and to deconstruct in a way the, the, the intellectual context and the written context around well, an artist. This was a, this was a deeply troubling thing and I, I can tell you that in the course of writing the book I had a lot of disputes with people about it. Uh, there was all that stuff which came to mind about the fact that simply by using contemporary sources where I, that what, what right did I have to assume that the contemporary sources had precedent over the secondary? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Um, I was, I'm of an inclination. I, I, I don't think of myself as, an art, as a secondary source art historian. I think of myself as a kind of jeweller. My, my role is to take the nuggets of the past and present them to That's the present. Idea. Yes. Yes? yes. Absolutely. So, giving things a setting. That is the humility of art history. Art history is not theoretically creating some massive illusion. It, it's, it's representing the past in ways that are attractive and stimulating for the, for, for the reader. I don't say for the present, because this book was very much not a present tense book, yeah. if, you, if you take my But point. very much grounded in the, own, in, in, in the art's Look, own context, it's, in the period. It's not just context, Johnny. If you, yeah, no, no, it's, I, more, I, it's more precise than that. It's about language. Yes. I'm really interested, as you could see from the book, in English literature. Absolutely. And my, my way of doing this was to say words. Yes? Words. Use 18th century words. Yes. Yes? And analyse 18th century words. Yes? If we do not use 18th century words, we are not in the 18th century. Yes. Is that fair? Oh, no, absolutely. And, and, and th this idea... I mean, I love the inversion of Nicholson and using the term darkness yes. because darkness was, was absolutely a cult idea in the 18th yeah, century. Yeah, sure. I and mean, you draw out that wonderful my, idea of my, young and night thoughts. My, my, my attitude to all that was that how could that possibly be missed? Yeah. How could it possibly be missed? I think you it know you're onto a great idea when you think this is such an open goal. How am I the person to... to, how, to uh, how could it be? I yeah. know why it was the case. It's horrid to be animated, but I know why it was the case. It was the case because everybody was pointing in directions where the open goal was not seen. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. That's the great problem. You know, art history is full of open goals. Absolutely, in my view. Yeah. yeah? Absolutely full of them. And the reason nobody sees them is because they're unacceptable. They're, they're not the place that, you know, the, the, the obvious things are often... The least explored. And so by that you're, you're talking about, for example, the, the very unsa unsettling but I think very important uh, observations you make about, you know, iconic works, for example, The Indian Widow, where, you know, you, you very uh, resolutely uh, uh, deconstruct that, the, the context that's been mm. built up around that painting to prove that this is not uh, um, some uh, uh, sort of um, uh, illustration of rights abolitionists, it's no, 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 no. This is actually something more, more sinister, and it's about fetishizing uh, yes, I mean, race uh, in a, in right, a uh, right, right. The, the real problem for me, one of the big problems for me, um, it was that right, right was liked too much by uh, people of liberal sensibility. <laughs> yes? That they wanted to turn him into their champion, and they gifted him with the politics that they found acceptable. Um, this is, for me, an invention. Yes? yes? And it was, it, it, it was there, it was that aspect of, of the great and the good, <laughs> if you understand my feel, that it, there's that disturbing element in sort of embedded somewhere in post-colonialism and things like that, that we can love people if they take the right attitude. Yeah, yeah. You, you see what I mean? I totally see. No, I think, and I think that's very problematic for an artist who, you know, spends a lot of his time, you know, working well, no, for a the, the big, who the, are... The big issue here, of course, he, 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 he was living he, in the house of a, of a man who made his money in tobacco, uh, who was corresponding with Clayton, Henry I mean, Laurence and, uh, you know, all of the, um, uh, uh, you know, was, was, was deep, 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 deep into it. Um, that's not an accusation, that's as an yeah. actua actuality. Yeah. Uh, the probability uh, that the uh, picture like um, Conversation with Girls was a um, abolitionist painting is, is, is ludicrously, infinitesimally small for me. Yeah. It is simply something which has been convenient to be thought in order to put Wright, who was 
linked with that um, proto-liberal lunar society um, I mean, gang in, 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 to put them into main, him into mainframe. We could love the lunar society. They were li they were of liberal disposition. They were taking us the right places. Sure. Y do you see what no, I mean? Absolutely. It's a very kind of whiggish idea that these somehow progress. Oh yes, uh, behind them. behind behind this book and behind a lot of s stuff that I'm thinking is a, a massive um, discontent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with um, the tendency, with the role of Whig history in sure. the, the, the making of the 18th century likeable by, by, by um, making it Whig. <laughs> and, and of course there is a sort of problem, I suppose, you, with you see, you see what I mean? I totally the proto-modernity no, no, position, I understand. Yeah? which is so pervasive, yeah. I, oh, I no, cannot no. tell you how pervasive well, it is. Well, it's pervasive because it's democratic, because it, it, it's in a sense, it, 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 it's so easy to do. It's, it's, it's reverse it. thinking. It's an attempt to make the 18th century relevant. Absolutely. And relevance isn't al always, relevance is, is a mantra. Yeah. But relevance isn't all the best ways, the best thing for art historians. No. Uh, do, you, do you see what I mean? I do. Well, I'm, um, I'm, and I wonder if one of the, you know, why Wright is so, was so right for this methodology and actually is so compelling is because the images are just so good. Yeah. And they're so easily, you know, you can, you can spin the wrong line so easily. So, yeah, sure. You know, it's seductive. I mean, the experiment with the bird yeah. pump is the sort of icon of... of yes. Of, well, look, I, I, was dealing with a, I was dealing with something where... The, the experiment was stuck on the front cover of every, every single book that you ever saw about it's the icon. Enlightenment. I mean, I it it had that. become an icon. It, and, yes? it, and it's become a, a Yes, and, and like every visual, icon, you no longer look at it. Well, and it's become a kind of visual shorthand for the concept of the Enlightenment as conceived. Yes, and because that, that was all, that was all for me, that was, that, was, that was also an open goal. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I, I like to go with, uh, I, I know it's challenging. I've been working in the 18th century for a long time now. Yeah. I read a lot of primary sources. When do I see the word enlightenment? Never. <laughs> you know, when do I when do I see this word? The, it, it, it's 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 a giant um, periodizing concept. Now, unfortunately, it was all about words for me with Wright of Derby because there was a point at which there was a slippage between him being painter of the enlightenment and his uh, pictures the light, use of light in them, becoming metaphorical yeah. of enlightenment. Now, nobody thought that was a problem. I clearly did. Yeah. Yes, I clearly think that taking something and turning it into metaphor, the same thing happened with the Industrial Revolution. Sure. Industrial Revolution was very clearly an a posteriori idea. You never read about the Industrial Revolution. I never read anything about industri industry in the literature about right before the mid-20th century. Therefore, I was questioning why? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, I accept context. I accept, yeah, but what I don't accept is zeitgeist. Yeah. Do you see it? And, and uh, the, um, the, the taking of a concept which seemed so obvious, which was only coined much, much later, and then suddenly for certain art historians, Albert Boym, for instance, it, these things became a, a, a iconic registers of in dust of revolution Absolutely. and became expressive uh, of, of, of a spirit of... Do you, and, do you see what I mean? The problem with Wright, I suppose, is that he taps into so many different thematic ideas of the 18th century. One yes. thinks he does. You know, he is the, he's the immediate poster boy for industrial revolution, for enlightenment, yeah, of course, for, I got, you know, science. Oh, no, and I got, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got sick and tired of, of, <laughs> of reading this idea that Wright was somehow some sort of also some kind of uh, some kind of right sort of capitalist as well uh, the, the 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 way in which pe uh, which which some people have gone through the account books and and and, and sort of presented the account books are shambles yeah, yeah? totally they're there yeah. in, you know Admit they're it, the accounts books are shambles and, yeah. um, uh, he's no he's no he's no calculated bourgeois no. Do, do you see what i mean well i think uh, we always uh, underestimate how much people dealt in cash and so it just yeah. simply never filters into an account book. I mean, you can yeah. never Yeah, I mean, really one, one, of the, one of the big deals about this, it, uh, there's all the subtleties in, of inflection in all these things. You know, we, we, we almost came from a world where the account books were used in, which are now sort of copies of them in the, uh, uh, in the National Portrait Archives are quite accessible. Uh, they were used, A, for attribution, which was perfectly all right, and for documentation, which was perfectly all right, and then starts to be used in... In, in ways to sort of create a bogus sense of, 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 of a, 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 you see that there, there, there's a big big trend in 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 in, um, in art bigger than right about um, 
believing that the 18th century is a period of uncomplicated commercialism. Yeah. Would you? Yes, do, no, do, I think do, that's do you know very, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 uncomplicated. It's particularly coming now from people work, looking back upon the 18th century from the 19th century. He believed that somehow the 18th century was all about, was a period in which unproblematic devotion to consumer values uh, suddenly yeah. outbroke, yes? Rights, attitudes are immensely complicated. Sure. Attitudes to consumerism in the arts in general are deeply, um, in my view, typically ambivalent, difficult, difficult... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it was, an, it, was not an, it was not an easy profession in which to make a living. Yes, and there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of conflicting currents about, about becoming rich, etc. This yeah. is a complexity. Yeah. And as we as we all know, we've got we've got the um, the difficulty that um, the, um, the 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 materialistic uh, uh, new new art history, which um, ought to have been deeply into economy, uh, was in practice hardly into economy at all. It was into it was into it, political economy. economy. Yeah, 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 political. Yeah, economy. No, and political economy is something totally different. Yeah, the nuts nice. and bolts of business history. This, I discovered this working in uh, sculpture history. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where the nut and bolts of a sculptor's businessman, they were not, they were not taken on by the left, and that's what was important to me. Sure. Uh, I could understand a, a snooty attitude to a sculptor's business because of division of labour. Yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah I could yeah. understand all that. Yeah. What I couldn't understand was the left not taking to it. Okay, so what, so there's so there's some lacuna in this book, and you know, I'm I'm I yeah you know, I've written written about that. And one of the things that, 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 that I think, uh, you know, where, you know, this is a very refreshing and, and you know, amazingly stimulated cap, but the pictures can get a bit lost. Oh, the yeah. The materiality of the paint. Of the bit. I, I, know, I, know, I know this point, yes. It, it's really, it's, it's, it's a really difficult, it's a, it's a really difficult thing. I think I can give it, I think it's a big problem in, uh, it, what probably doesn't come across to you reading this is that, I myself went to art college, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not that type, um, uh, and uh, in, I, I also um, have a lot of. I myself, am, I, I, I would say, uh, fi found that um, there was a tension in trying to, you know, there's that awful word image, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which I, I reckon I, I'm currently writing a book which I'm, I'm attacking the word image, image yeah. and its constant use. Yes. Uh, in it, in it, it, it takes off from the familiarity with turning all things into illustrations, photographic illustrations. Yeah. Yes, and the materiality, the actuality of the things, is 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 lost. Yeah. Um, I found this part difficult, and I accept that it was um, yeah, because I I, I, I I I was writing a book of largely about contested contexts. Yeah, absolutely. And Editing it wise, it was difficult to to get the that aspect. It's not a connoisseurial thing at all. No, it's, no, no. it's not a connoisseur thing. No, no. I, I don't think I turned my. Uh, but it, there was there was that thing where you were faced with um, uh, say three variants of a thing. This is or, and, and right right was a problem for me. Uh, you, you you bet I had problems. Yeah. Yeah. Because right was a serial painter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he painted variant, 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 and teasing out which one to use, and not just simply, t we'll take that one because we can get an illustration sure, and all sure, that. Sure. It was an issue. It's a yeah. complicated thing. I was asking a question about um, your approach and, 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 and the, perhaps the sense that, that, that some of the paintings are less paintings, more images. And I'm interested sure. to know about, you know, one of the things I'm very passionate about is the science of art history, the fact that actually knowing who, when, what, why is is a sort of central tenet. Of tenor. course it is. And there's, and there's been a kind of academic retreat from that. Yes, because it's considered, in some stages, it was it was contaminated by people like Tima Becker. Sure. Yeah, if, if you yeah, know yeah. my point. No, totally. It, it remains contaminated by that aspect. And I think and in British art history, in a slightly more complicated way, there's there's a class issue and an educational issue. Yes, and, a, and, 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 a, and there was and this whole of, thing in, in, in social history of art that it was, it was at, 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 at war with the owners of art. But yeah, I would uh, contend with Bright, it has an importance for... for, for oh, it has for, an importance because you need to know the earth. You need to know the earth. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, you're very generous about Nicholson and, and the fact that he did, yeah, sure. you know, with astonishing, uh, astonishing uh, um, you know, 
given the resources available to him, he did produce a, a very kind of credible Oh, uh, yes, he produced an incredible, and he had, he had, to be frank, he had greater resources than I did. Sure. Do you see sure. what I mean? No, no, of course. I mean, of one, course. Of, one of the great, uh, I'll, I'll speak practicalities now. Um, art, art history is an underfunded business. Yeah. Um, I've, I've t to my own, I, 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 I've just sort of neglected doing a book on, uh, t t doing a book on tomb sculpture, another book, if to, finish of my career simply because I cannot afford to yeah. travel to view these things it's tremendously expensive and, um, and, I, uh, and I'm not in a position yes and I've got access problems I mean I've you know how do the whole does, thing how does and, one write about uh, right I, when so I, many things are buried in houses that you yes, simply can't, can't see, see yeah. which actually does prove does actually end then, with an amazingly asymmetric view of right of course yeah I mean and, and, and have you ever seen a photograph of Rad but isn't it an asymmetric view of of Georgian art in general, yes, because those things which got pr prioritised. Look at the sort of relatively um, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Andrews, for instance, which seems to me quite a minor painting, which is by its place at the National Gallery has has it's 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 an it's it, it's a, it's a form of um, of a creation of a canon, yeah. which is determined by art art galleries, and th when things go into private private hands, they they disappear from the f from the canon. The canon is. But again, we, the, the, this is another massive issue in art history. I mean, even something like Mr. and Mrs. You know, the, 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 the Burdett portrait, which mm. being stuck in Prague. Oh, it's stuck in Prague, but it's fantastic. It's probably the greatest, it's you know, the greatest early thing. And it's but, but surreal. Nobody, 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 sees, of, it. No, nobody uh, sees it. And we only and ever see it in reproduction. We which, see it in reproduction. But there um, are works. I mean, one thinks of the ensemble. I mean, Mortimer as a character who comes out of the book yeah. as, as worthy of an enormous amount more of, of more, research yes. and more interest. And, 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 Dazzlingly reviewed in his own lifetime. And, and yes, exactly. He's the only yeah. the only draftsman to enter the British Museum in his lifetime. Yes, and, um, and a whole heap of other characters. Yeah. I mean, I, I I'm currently working as you might know, a mezzotint, and yeah. I, 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 one of the the big regrets I had to th this was that I got a hint of I found for the first time some letters by by William Pether, uh, who's extraordinary, uh, yeah. who is an extraordinary artist, but by the um, the, the sheer accident of entering the engraving trade. Um, has been kind of eclipsed. Yeah. I, I was very aware, for instance, that, that the, the prize winners, uh, a, a group of Gress, Pether, these people, um, right had, I, I believe, probably gone into those early society of uh, yeah. art, artists and, and, and not won. And the people who won, Gress, Pether, Mortimer, well, in the case of Pether and Gress, they had been kind of forgotten. And yeah. right, because he had a career which was has a prominence, had kind of been, had been kind of, Prioritise, but these these things are are entirely typical of canon. I mean, I yes, of course. I yeah. talk to my students all the time about how museums create canon, the 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 decisions, not only what goes into a museum, but what the museum decides to take out of its stores. Uh, I turn that the, on its head and say academics create canons. Well, yes, too. I yes. mean, the fact uh, is combined with, with them, but but, uh, but, at, but it's true though about yeah about academics and canons. Why, the is, there no yes. why, why is, is there no book on Pether? Yes. Why is there no book? Why hasn't why, there why, been why, a book on Mortimer since Sutherland? Since uh, Warpel, yes, Warpel and, and why the whole whole um, uh, lists of really wonderful Look, artists never make the light of day? Someone like Daniel Gardner. Mm. Really fascinating. If you want to know about the commercial mechanism for painting mm. in London in the second half of the 18th century, he, he exhibits one thing at the Royal Academy. There mm. is not a single but scholarly it's, article it is my, on him. It is, my, it is my huge regret, you know, one person, you know. This has been my big preoccupation, actually, because one thing about actually looking at pictures, about, do, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Actually looking at pictures and saying, yeah, that's a great painting. Yeah. I never heard of that guy. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Um, that doesn't come across an, I, enough, no. you, you know, and um, uh, uh, it, 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 one of the big problems with, with the arrival of the new art history was that it, it, it did nothing about canon. It simply, it simply looked at all the old things in new ways. Yes, absolutely. Um, no, so, no. So, so we got another whole heap of things about the familiar faces. And it wasn't radical in that respect. No, it, I agree. It, because it, and then one of the great tonics about reading 18th century sources is you get this firm sense of the people who were admired at the time. Completely. And Mortimer, and that is as completely, you say. And completely different totally. to the people who are admired now. 
you know, artists that are that are totally missing from the canon, I mean, yeah. or, or or for whom you know there isn't sufficient amount of academic work. I mean, there are a huge number. Of, you know, one was thinking of Daniel Gardner, but there are you know other practitioners. Well, well I was I was thinking of Russell, and uh, yeah. I, I was thinking of the way, for instance, that um, ra ra the the very most basic thing that Russell produced um, notebooks in shorthand, yeah. and that though that they are actually quite easily translated, but because he's Russell, the <laughs> They remain uh, not decoded. Sure. Um, it's, it's, it's part of this thing. It, I think that part of the joy of looking is to look afresh yeah. at uh, the overlooked and to, and it, it, it needs to be done in 18th century because for me, uh, it's, it's not plural enough. Um, and, uh, no, and I think that we, when we get obsessed with, with certain mechanics that aren't necessarily particularly as relevant you know, I, 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 I find the obsession about the exhibiting societies problematic yes. for the simple reason that, uh, that the, the, the audience must have been relatively small and, and the press accounts are, you know, very... You're talking to the converted. <laughs> what, what, what's happened with it is there's been an obsession for public art. It was all triggered by this mass enthusiasm for Habermas. Sure, know, sure. Theory driven. Sure, yes? sure, sure, sure. Okay, there's, there's much in it. And, and, and the justification in it is that Exhibitions, if you look back, exhibitions weren't discussed. They weren't discussed enough. No, no, no. And criticism was not discussed enough. No. And so it's, it's, in that respect, great. But the, what's happened with it, if someone who talks, who's interested in the history of sculpture, is that, um, is that things are not given their place. No. You know, it, for social environment, the obsession of public sphere has led to an incapacity to deal with private sphere and to deal with pictures in their original functional context, which yep. is surely something to do with social, social history. Absolutely. But um, the, th this overbalance, this way in which public sphere has kind of dominated uh, perception. And I suppose that roots us back to right in, in, in the fact that, you know, one I think of the most startling re revelations is a, very, is, is a very quiet one, which is about the great sequence of candlelight paintings made in the late 1760s. Mm where your assertion or your suggestion is that they're actually portraits yeah, and sure. that, that is the context in which they should be read, not as these, uh, these sort of bare moths of, uh, of meaning that yeah, they've Yeah, sure. Become. I mean, the, 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 the problem with those pictures is they'd been absurdly layered with meaning yeah. and to an extent where they needed them to mean so much that, the, that the, any possibility that they had, put, had, had quite simple portrait function was, uh, you know, they became they be, uh, you know, I wrote this many times, but some of the versions I had, oh, these have become emblems. Yeah. These have become emblems. They've stopped becoming, <laughs> they, they've turned into, uh, and, and certain scholars were talking about, were comparing them freely without any, with emblem pictures, yeah. with, with allegorical pictures, yeah. yes? Yeah. And ev every piece, but th there's, that, there's that big thing in art history that once something becomes iconic, there's a deep, deep drive for meaning. Yeah. Do you see what oh, I mean? Of course. Yeah. And then, and then, the, 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 the simple function. You know, you know, I had all this problem with those with with the identification of people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now I, I had that thing. I, I believe that that very early on, I, I I found very early records which suggest which you know so so profoundly loaded in in favour of these being the citizens, yes? Yeah. Every one, the, 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 what stood against me there, yeah? I couldn't give lectures on it in public. Sure. Because the, uh, because the investment of other scholars in me not being right. Yeah. No, was no, so great. But do you, but equally, do you see what I, I mean? do, but equally I think Wright had the a slightly kind of interesting historiography in the sense that in the 19th century, he's reconstituted as the sort of great man of Derby. Yeah. And, and you get kind of Bemrose et al. Yes, and, and yes. those collectors, yes, so those, sort of those Midland based collectors. Yes. And, and he's bought. And you've got these early exhibitions in which exactly. he's claimed. And, and people like Strat and, and Ingle, yeah. Inglefield who buy voraciously in the mid 19th century to sort of make him yes. a man of the Yes, And he had become more Derby than he was in his own life. Which is very because interesting. Because they bought him back. Exactly. And um, so I think, you know, then, then this 19th century drive to see narrative means, for example, you get in the experiment with the bird pump, the assertion that it's the, that it's the Coltmans. Uh, and, and the even more ludicrous thing I noticed on the uh, National Gallery label 
is that it's the Coltman's children. Well, the Coltman's didn't have children. No, no, this is nonsense, because the, because the wedding portrait, they didn't have children at that exactly. stage. Well, they didn't have children full stop. Stop, yes, but they didn't have, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, so this, this idea that Wright seems to be an artist who's peculiarly susceptible to, to narrative interpretation that, that simply isn't sustainable. Well, you see, the, 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 for me, if you want bigger vision, uh, Wright was a man who took time to escape the parameters of a portrait painter. Do, do you yeah, see what I, I mean? I do, yes, I think that's And very I think Burdett, who was an expert in mathematics and perspective, was his channel to yeah. a gradual uh, way of thinking outside the, 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 the portrait convention. Yes. To me, up until 17, mid, actually, ironically, until Burdett had actually left, um, Wright, Wright's there working as a man whose imagination is portrait is to much extent portrait driven. Yes, yes and he can't quite near sight. That's so interesting. Near sight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that it takes time for him to develop long sight. Sure. Yes, which is the sort of instincts of the land. One of the interesting things about Wright of Derby is that he goes into transition from a, a, an essentially portrait focused to essentially figure a landscape. To, yes. And, 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 and that's and sort of what Liverpool, 1769, you yes, know, the, the some, Academy some, of the Lamplight is some, the first one where happening. it's yes. not portrait. Yes. And, 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 and this is a gradual shift. Yeah. It, it, it initially, I, I think, although it's very difficult to show, you know, Burdett's a formidable expert in... in yeah. I mean, for me, Wright, Wright was an, in, in, an incompletely trained painter. Of this course. was the, this yeah. was the this was the story. Which Despite the two periods with Hudson, he's yeah, you know. he's an incompletely trained. And Burdett is the completion of the training. Sure. Yes, and Burdett has everything that Wright needs. He has uh, he has ex access to people who um, know anatomy, the, yeah. the, the, the 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 thing which can break a man into history into history or the likes of history. He can, uh, and he has that un you know really strong. I mean, by 18th century standards, really strong grasp yeah. of, 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 uh, of, of perspective from a surveyor's point of view, which, um, which it, 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 you know, there's, there's a reason why Wright clings to him, uh, because yes. he makes him complete. Do, do, do you see what I, I do, mean? yeah, I think that's very interesting. And of course that plays into a slight tension that's always existed between the idea of Wright the provincial and, and his links with metropolitan. And I think one of the things that comes out very clearly from the book is actually that's just nonsense. It's a, it's a totally false binary. It's not a, yeah, uh, this was the big, this was the big, this was the big line of attack when we when we planned the book. Yeah, yeah. it was that we had gone into a position of silly binaries. Yeah. Yes, and that what was taken was subtlety, and that subtlety, subtlety worked between the lines. Yeah. Yes, and acknowledged that that, I think the early parts of the book are devoted to breaking down that sense that there is provincial society and there's metropolitan society. Yeah. They put a couple of sentences in there to kind of put the cat amongst the pigeons of that. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you see what no, I mean? No, I do, and I think it's very important. I mean, I'm, I, you know, this idea that actually England was a confederation of country houses and that, that, that you know, it was, it was concentric circles of court, courtiers, you know, po po you know, political sphere, and these people radiated both in and out is really yeah. important. You, you no one lived, no one, to use that terrible modern academic uh, phrase, no one lived in a silo. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but I, 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 I wanted to, I could see things, th things polarising yeah. in, in the literature. I could see a, 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 a need to claim right as a, a, as, as a, as a, as a, as a Derby, <laughs> yeah. in a very, in a very cliche way for sure. me. And, and, what was fascinating was the, was the, because I didn't even think it was as, 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 as straightforward as Wright continually travelling to London or refusing to travel to London. It was all about where, what Derby actually was. Yeah. That it was, and the interesting kind of relationship of those places to, to London society. I mean, what, what sort of triggered this in me was the realisation that, you know, the, now the, the the main you know what they can now call the Derby Cathedral is essentially a sort of refiguration of, of St Martin's the Field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? And uh, and uh, it's those kind of thoughts uh, that the metro that you know what, what's all this stuff about uh, provincial? Stuff? I want to rethink it. 
Yeah. Do, 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 do you see? I've, 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 I've been working on, a, on another project about Mrs. Lindwood, yes, who was a Leicester woman. Yeah. I just had a wonderful time with the same ideas, yes, yeah. because Mrs. Lindwood pulled off the most wonderful things. Like, she was never seen in London. She was yeah, only yeah, yeah, seen yeah. in, but she had a gallery in. So th th these are all very intricate ideas, the relationship between province and, cent and central, yeah. And so you're ta you, you talked brilliantly about pulling a brick out of the wall. Um, and undoubtedly cracks will start appearing thanks to this I, book. I wonder, I, I, I wonder, John. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, 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 I wonder. I mean, I would, I would hope that, 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 you know, I don't want to be a damn buster, but I would, <laughs> I would hope... It's a bouncing, that, that, definitely a bouncing, that, yeah, a bouncing bomb. bomb. <laughs> I would hope that there was a bouncing bomb in there. You know, and, so and I, I would hope that that bouncing bomb wasn't just a bouncing bomb for right at Derby. No, I, I think that that's. I mean, I think that you're a part. You have shown a very clear path to to, to really reassessing, to grappling with the, the, the bigger concepts of 18th century. Yeah, I, I, I hope there's something in the style, the yep. methodology. Yeah. Yeah, which is food for thought. I can't do any more than that. No. Do, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, right at the beginning of this, um, Mark and I had a big discussion about all this. Yeah, just to, well, Hallett yeah. had a big discussion about this, and uh, I was over negative. I, I wanted to <laughs> attack, yeah. But Mark came in for me for put something in its place, man. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And so this book became a put something in its place book. Yeah. A small thing in the place, but methodologically um, uh, suggestive. Let's put Fantastic. it that way. Yeah. Do, do you see what I mean? Totally. Uh, a, to a, a different type of book. Most importantly, more important for me than the critics of the book, is that the, the, the sound was not the same. It's been the same with everything. I, I don't like the sound. Do, do, do you get what I mean? And I think, I mean? you know, the fact you're, the reviews, that the reviews I've read, have, have been from historians of science and have been yeah. as well as art historians and so that I think that sense that, that the ripples yeah and, and, and no I, what I'm talking about is that the, the sound should be suitable for the reading of a wide variety of people yeah I think who that's can engage it do, do you see what I mean I didn't want it to sound like an art history <laughs> too much like that so the, the prose is calculated for a broader, a broader well, I have to say that you know, the, 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 as one of the assessors of this year's prize, um, you know, I think it was unanimous in the room that, that you'd absolutely achieved that, and that that really this was a book with astonishing ambitions and 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 you know, delivered, and that's such a rare thing to encounter. And so I I'm, I'm I think it was um, it, it's a book that actually I think has enormous amount in it for really readers from almost. You know, yeah. any discipline that's just interested in society in 18th century Britain. Well, the challenge the for me was that it pulled me all over the place. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, my brain had to go everywhere. Oh, and that's very clear. I mean, you, one does do the gymnastics with you, which is that actually very, oh, you know, I love yeah. the fact that, you know, even just the metaphor of well, darkness, you're talking about, you know, the tabula rasa only, and, and the rare shows. It wasn't only that, you know. Johnny. I don't think we, you, you noticed that that I found major inadequacies in the, in the history of science literature. Yeah, the, no, no, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 one of the breakthroughs, I, I didn't depend. It's, well, not, a, I didn't it's depend not a skull. On, yeah, no, no, it's not only that. It, it's <laughs> the, the fact that nobody had noticed that it's a, it, it's a portable air pump. Yes, sure. which was the big deal, because yeah. just nobody noticed it. And, pe and history of science people hadn't noticed the importance. They hadn't read the catalogues well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the big problems with art, with art history, which I've been fascinated for years about, was that problem of interdisciplinarity, yeah. which this book explores. We cannot depend on them totally. It, we just don't knit art history into the other disciplines. We can't be that lame. <laughs> No, yes. exactly. No, no, no. It's and really yet important. we are pushed into these areas where, we, uh, where I read stuff. I say, I don't quite like that. Yeah. Do, you, do you see what I mean? Totally. And then I've got to go, I mean, one of the big areas here, which I, in the process of this, I, I did all my own, ana I did all my own ana anatomical work here. Did the history of medicine side of this. I wrote other articles on history of medicine to prepare myself for this. Yeah, for yeah. This. And uh, I, I, I had to, you know, I had to function 
as, <laughs> you know, I could not depend on the secondary lens. No, I think that, that do, comes do, across do very powerfully. I mean? No, that comes across very powerfully. And the same was true with the, some aspects of the English lit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's, I mean, what's interesting is that um, the experiment with the bird uh, in the air pump is off to the Huntington yeah, on sure. exhibition and we're getting the blue boy in return. I wonder if, just as we conclude, you, you might say something about you know, why Wright of Derby matters in an international context. I mean, he's well, a peculiarly yeah. Derby-based no, painter, no, English this is, painter. This is, this was why, a should people, why should people in California <laughs> go a, and look at this painting? This was a, this was a, this was a very contested point we, s several years ago. Uh, there was a the abortive attempt to make another Wright of Derby show to follow on. And I, I took the devil's advocate, you know, you know before I, I get that. I said, look, Wright of Derby is not a painter. They were saying, oh, Wright of Derby is an international painter. I said, no, please, let's not have any careless speaking about that because uh, I can't find many sources about Wright of Derby. But that doesn't mean because he wasn't being talked in Germany, there were just a few fragments of noticing him in Italy, yes? It doesn't mean that he isn't a s significant figure. The, um, the, the, the case for him being a national painter and is there and manifest yes. in the reviews, in, to the extent that people are, in, in his own lifetime, he's, he's got this presumptuous notion that he's the greatest painter, not only in, <laughs> he, he, you know, you've seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, he, he presumes he's not only the greatest painter in, in, in Britain, but he's the greatest, you know, this man's not short, <laughs> yeah? He, he presumes he's the greatest painter in Europe. You, you, you get my, yeah, my drift. Yeah, absolutely. And he's built, he's his own billing, you know, his own publicity is that, yeah? And I don't think it's that it's stupid. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, you know, this, this, is a, this, this guy's a big player on the national scene. And, and it, that will, um, and British art is an ascendant art, yes? British art is, 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 absolutely. is itself, in, in the well, broader context of Europe, is, 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 is the British school is on the right. Well, the it's British articulating school is itself. Articulating itself is, is, beca is, is, is becoming something other than minor on a European scale, yes. Uh, and, and, and right's part of it. Um, uh, so let's not, let, let's not just turn to glib assurances that right was an international figure. I, I just, let's just abandon that, if, if you don't mind. No, no, absolutely. Um, and and uh, we don't need it, <laughs> yes? We need to know that British art Was belongs on yeah. the national stage and he belongs at the centre of British art, despite being stationed in Derby. And we don't need to think that Derby is the centre of the world. No. This was my big point in the book. Derby was not the centre of the world. It was not the centre of the Industrial Revolution, yes? <laughs> yes. That doesn't mean that we, need, that, that we need some absurd kind of counter narrative which puts Derby at the centre of some, uh, to, 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 to put this man at the centre of the enlightenment. Do, do you get my point? I totally do. It's yeah. been so hackneyed. Yeah. Yes, no, absolutely. Cheap shortcuts to, cheap to, shortcuts. Cheap shortcuts to, to making the argument for a major painter. Look at the bloody paintings. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do, do, do you see what I, I mean? totally do. Well, there you are. There's no better, <laughs> no better way to end than look at the bloody paintings. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to be No, so, no, no. I think uh, it's wonderful. Um, Matthew, thank you so much. That's, That's right. been great. And, and congratulations again. Yeah, tough.